at this graph question. Okay, now, for starters, we already know, well, at least most of us already knew what a log curve basically looks like. Okay, it's this guy. I'm so happy I know it. I'm glad you know it. Okay. okay, so this is our basic log graph. There's no details on here. This could be log base 2, could be log base E, I don't know any other details. Okay, yep. So on the top, is that a whole circle or an arrow? That's an arrow. That's an arrow. Well, I hope you know that it's an arrow because the log curve just goes forever. Yeah? Okay. So I need to think about how do I take this basic log curve and adjust it to take into account the fact that there's this x1 and there's also this e. These are the two important things. Okay? Max? Okay, very good. So the x plus 1 tells me that the transformation is I shift one unit to the left. Translation? translation is the fancy word, but I think we're all happy to call it a shift. You, you know what that means, okay? So this is a shift one unit um, left. Is that okay? Now that base E, now I want you to have a look at your graph because I saw very few people who actually did this. I want you to have a look at my graph over here which I've already drawn for you. I want you to tell me, how can you tell that my graph is a base E graph as opposed to like Base 2, base 3, base 4, any other base parent. The, the x um, point of e minus 1. Very good. So I've got a point for scale. Now I had a look around a lot of you. You were not, you didn't provide me a point for scale, so that was kind of a problem. Your graph could have just as easily had some different base and it would still look exactly like yours. Okay? So let's let's now try to work this out. The first thing I'm gonna do is you can see, unlike my normal log curve, you can see I'm drawing a bit of extra space over here, yeah? Because I'm accounting for this shift, everything goes one unit to the left, okay? So very good, let's start with the asymptote, that's a good spot. Usually I have an asymptote where? What's the equation of the asymptote? X equals zero, thank you. Um, as opposed to say Y equals zero, which the exponential curve would have, that's a horizontal line. So if my asymptote's usually X equals zero, but I've said we're shifting one unit to the left, where is it now? You have to make it's it negative x equals negative 1. Fantastic. So let's go ahead and let's draw that, right? If you didn't get this 100%, pop that in. What makes that little bracket 0? Is that right? That's not a bad way to think about it, but the danger is that you don't always, like having it equal 0 is not always the right way to go about it. Because there might be, for example, if I gave you something like this. Something like that, okay? Um, this is more complicated than just like, oh, it's just gone this way or that way. Um, you'd have to think about, yeah, those things equal zero give you asymptotes, but on a log curve, it does something else, okay? So it's not a bad rule of thumb, but I think this is a more helpful way of thinking about it. This is where my asymptote usually is, and I'm shifting it, okay? What else do you normally know about the log curve that we can also shift over to the left? Any takers? Tavar, I saw in your graph, there's an important point that you could put on there. Yeah, cool. What do we, what do we call that? The point where it goes through? It has a name? Uh, well, it will be the origin, but the name of that point is the intercept, right? Now, it's going to go through the origin because where did it go before? Max? Yeah, 1, 0, right? So nothing's happened to the vertical, but this guy has moved one unit that way. Okay? So that's where I'm going to pass through. So you can see that's how I get this same basic shape. Okay, so that's at zero. Asymptote check, intercept checked. Yes? Okay, all right, now I want you all to know, right? This graph here, which a lot of you have drawn, this could be log base two of x plus one. You can put it into Desmos, or log base four, yeah. I need something to give me a sense of the scale, vertically and horizontally, right? So therefore you've got to provide a point. Now, have a think. Normally, right? Let's suppose I was picking something like log base 2 of x. This is the normal graph, right? The way to know how you work out a good spot on it is you think about the base down here, okay? So a good spot for this graph would be like 2 or 4 or 8, right? Because they're all powers of 2, right? Um, in this case, the spot I would actually pick would be the first one, which would be 2 comma 1, okay? But I've got a base of E for this graph I'm supposed to draw. So for this, I would think about what happens if I put E in here or something like that. Okay? Max, what are you thinking? Log base E of E one. Very good. So if I had log base E of E, 
right? That's one. That's like e to the power of one gives you e, right? That's the way a log equation works. The only snag is um, I had to do this. Had to do this shift, one unit to the left, yeah? So instead of putting e in there, or to get e in there, I've got to put, and you can see the point that I've chosen, right? e, I'll put it in red, e take away one. Do you see how that works? Not really. Okay, well, yeah. let's, let's just evaluate it, right? If I put in x equals e take away one, then you have to add one to it, because that's what the equation of the graph is. So e take away one plus one gives you what? E minus 1 plus 1 will give you E, right? E take away 1 plus 1. Do you agree with that? Gives you E, and that's what gives you this 1 on the right-hand side that you're after. Okay? So that is how I chose my point for scale, which you really, really should put there. They didn't tell you, but that's, um, that is a bit sneaky. Well, would you lose a mark? Answer, I can't tell what your graph is until that point is there. Right? If this graph had a different base, it could still look like that, except it just wouldn't go through that point. Okay? So, would you lose the mark? I think it's pretty plausible. Okay? Yeah. Make sense?